Hi guys, this is Mitesh Vishwanath. I'm a cinematographer, and thank you so much for giving me so many questions to answer. And here goes, I'm going to answer so many questions today. So this is a question from Himar uh, Himar Thakore underscore zero seven. So as a beginner. Um, he's asking as a beginner, what are the difference, uh, different cinematography aspects that we shall look out for when you watch a movie? So basically, when I started off, I used to look at um, how the camera is moving, how they lit the scene, what is the super objective of the scene, uh, what are they trying to communicate? Are they trying to tell me uh, am I am I getting scared? I mean, basically, all of those things depict the way one lights a scene and the way one moves the camera in a scene. So I think when you watch a movie, it's good to look out for those things. Honestly, more than anything, you should honestly enjoy the film rather than looking out for all of these things. But if you are looking out for all those things, all of these things are a good way to, you know, start uh, understanding what why a cinematographer makes a particular decision. So next question is Drew underscore films. He asks, "How was your experience at the New York Film Academy? Would you recommend it to other students?" Honestly, when I went to the New York Film Academy, I was a beginner. I had no idea what uh, cinematography was. Of course, I've been on a few sets before, so I knew the basics of it, but I had no technical knowledge as such. So for me, it was a beautiful, beautiful ride where I got to shoot so many short films. My roommates were directors, and I got a lot of exposure shooting uh, with film, with the digital, and uh, learning and working in different constraints, scenarios with no lights, with lights. So it was honestly a great, great experience for me. So Turaja Ghosh underscore DOP asks, what's the difference between lighting setups for a commercial and for a feature film? How is it that even a screen grab can tell you if it's an ad or a feature? So honestly, for me, I pretty much like the same way. Of course, commercials expect you to light slightly brighter and slightly for the for the point. But I've learned over the years that honestly, um, if you develop a mood and a style to um, how what the what the commercial is really after, and if it looks moody and interesting, I think they'll go for it. But personally, I don't make much of a difference. Maybe in a feature film, I'll add more contrast, but on a commercial, it's a bit more lenient like that. But for me, honestly, I don't make a conscious effort to do something different when I'm shooting a commercial. It's usually just a little bit more poppy because it's literally there for a short while, so you concentrate on the things for a quick moment. So the the, the only thing thing is that I mean, you gotta. Make your choices on shots. Those are very different. You got to know when uh, in the edit when what is going to come. You know that's the only difference for me in a commercial and a film. Okay. So Sakit at the end, Sakit Gani asks, do you rely on visual reference during pre-production, and could you share your references for these January and uh, any other commercials? So for commercials, I usually don't reference us that much because uh, we have a lot of uh, in pre. I mean, DAs and directors they come up with their references because they have a really short time to shoot. So for feature films, I usually try and find one reference. That connects me like an image that either I'll find before I start production or during. Is usually I find it before, and that kind of depicts the way the film should look for me. So Nilja will pop up here, and Uri will pop up here. Then Ravat Ji asks, how do you refrain from repetition in your different films? Is there any masterclass or books or films that uh, you reference before shooting a film? So repetition, I I literally choose my narratives very very carefully, and I try not to repeat uh, films. The kind of films I've done, not try not to shoot it the same way. So at, at a script level itself, I think all my my films have been different, including Uri and Nirja. I mean, maybe the actionness of it could have been the same because somehow I have the tendency towards liking that. But I think narratively they all are uh, different, and I think for me I, I I like that emotional angle also of films where they connect to the all where you kind of feel for all the film, you know. So I personally don't. I try very consciously to kind of look at what people have done. If if those films have already come out or those kind of films have come out, I make a conscious effort to go through all those films and see what not to do, because then all of those things have already been done. So I I try to kind of look at those movies and decide okay these are things that have already been done what is new that i can what is what is something new that i can create so i make a list of things of what i do not want to do that's actually what i make first as opposed to making a list of what to do and then i kind of arrive at uh, that much easily so rashmi 9009 has asked uh, how important is storyboard and how much of a difference does it make to your life and work so honestly i personally like storyboarding and don't like it at the same time but if we're shooting something act something that's uh, integral to 
a specific requirement or I think when we have a budget constraint on things or when it's so precise that we have very short days it's usually every time but um, I think I like to storyboard when we have action when we've got specific things that we need to shoot but obviously once you go into uh, actual shooting it's not like you have to go by the storyboard and tick it and say okay I've got this shot it's not really necessary and also at that time you feel that okay this is what it's working or this is not so you can alter on the day so I like I like storyboards when you have a reference and you have a kind of preset in your mind saying this is what I these are my this is my um, starting point and this is what I want to achieve and then whatever happens later on is is a bonus maybe just the writer has asked that um, for those who want to learn cinematography which is one of the crafts that they teach in film school or which is the other way to kind of learn uh, the craft if you don't consider going to film school so I think honestly being on set and learning on the job is a great way and if you don't have that opportunity for some reason then honestly that I, I did a lot of this which was go to YouTube watch making offs and just try to learn whatever little I could and um, you know subscribe to American Cinematographer you can read a lot uh, about how they make films and what they do and why they make certain choices on that and I think personally just honestly try and shoot stuff on your own and you have a camera, you have a phone, I think access to all of these things is very easy now. Write a story and shoot something and you make mistakes and you learn. So Manas Ajmera asks, um, how did film school help you and how different is it in LA and in Mumbai? So honestly I didn't get an opportunity to work a lot in LA but honestly the only difference that I saw was the fact that the grips kept the light stands and camera assistants in India are actually gaffers or actually help more on lighting and camera assistants there are only camera. That's the only difference. Everywhere else, cinematography is the same. So Vidit Singh asked, how can you develop an aesthetic on a shoestring budget, especially in the exteriors? Honestly, that's the easiest thing to do. Because if you have if you have a budget, then you are no, if you have a if you are in a budget, then I'm assuming you probably are doing a short film or probably don't have a restriction on days because then everyone's come on free. So what I would recommend is shoot early morning and sunset. That's it. I mean honestly, there's nothing better than that in the day exterior. So Omkar XO asks, being a DOB movie, was it difficult to communicate with the director and his style? How did you guys, um, how did you share your inputs to him? So when we started prep, uh, we sh I shared a lot of references as to how I was thinking about certain things he did and we came to a kind of mid-conclusion of what it is that each section and each scene should look like. And I think uh, collaboration in films is the key and um, I think if a director doesn't want your inputs, that's some, I mean that's, kind of restricting you so I don't know if that's the best place for you to be in I think usually I've always worked with people who, who are open to listening to my inputs and that's honestly primarily the reason why they've hired me Tejas Sawan 13 has asked what's your process for selecting a perfect frame for a scene honestly I usually do all of those things when I'm scouting on a location and I know what the frame is and my tendency is to frame with a lot of wider lenses I don't use tele I don't I don't personally like tele lenses and I resort to them only if I really have to for a certain kind of scene and certain kind of expression that I'm trying to uh, come across but honestly for me there's nothing as a perfect frame because I'll be correcting it till the next five years yeah. Manas Ajmera has asked the question again Manas is on the roll for a cinematographer that's starting out how do you look for work in the industry and should one assist the DOP or look for work individually honestly anything you can do you get on set anything just get on set, work, learn every single day because you're still young and, and you're just probably starting and I'm still learning as well till, till I mean at this point in my life and the idea is just to be open and never think you know everything and there's always someone bigger and better than you I think as much as you can remember that and be on set as much as you can and of course shoot a lot and I think those all of those things help I am Karan Dabla has asked how to, how to maintain a contrast source of light for five or six hours while shooting a day exterior on a sunny day. Honestly, you have to plan your days very smartly. What I usually do is I start shooting the wider shots um, when it's early morning and evening. And what I usually do is I cut off the sun and create my own sunlight so it stays consistent for top light. It's been a very long time since I have shot a lot of stuff like this um, as a day exterior. Usually you wrap up scenes in the morning as, as well only in like two or three hours if it's meant to be shot in the morning. That's, that's the best way to do it or come back another day and, and do those things but what I would recommend is cut the sun once it goes up and or shoot backlight because you know, that's always safe if you shoot backlight then you can shoot till like 11 and then you can cut it off and then create your own backlight so there are all those tricks that you can try and you know test and figure whatever works best for your narrative Raghavi Anusko Agarwal 
asks, what amongst the entire process of cinematography feels the most immersive to you? Honestly, the shooting. I get really, really bored in scouts. I don't enjoy it as much, but I love shooting. I love being on set. That's my most favorite. Prep is a 50-50, but post is also, I love the grade because that's my finishing touches to the film. But shooting for me is the best, is the most exciting part of the film. So Parag Zone and Kaushik Ki Rao ask very similar questions. I'm going to combine both the questions and answer it. It says, how do you get that confidence after you finish film school? And uh, also, how tough was it to light when you first started? So I'm going to combine both because they're very similar. So honestly, I'll give you guys, I'll tell you guys a secret. Please don't tell anybody else. Because when I started my first film, I had no idea what I was doing. I had a very good first AC, he was named Arjun Sorte. He helped me out. In his words, he sorted me out and he was really sweet because he really helped me out and he understood that I was new and I was a uh, first time I was all of what 20 years old and um, he really helped me out. He he understood what I was trying to do and I had a basic idea about what I wanted to do, but the precision and the understanding I used to like a lot back then, thinking that commercials need to look bright and everything and um, films don't and I, I used to put a lot of lights and after I did Nirja I learned that honestly less is more and on Nirja I did not use a single light there was no stand on set there was no thermocol nothing there was no there, everything was ingrained in the set so that kind of taught me how to work smart and work with what's available and work with uh, things that you have around you as opposed to actually adding things I use uh, the most thing I use right now is a black cloth. I don't use lights. I don't have one particular thing that I use all the time. But if you ask me what is the one thing that you have to have on set is black. I use negative fill a lot because you have so much light around in, in uh, the exterior. You literally have to cut the light off one side to create contrast on the face. So honestly, in the beginning, it's tough. You just need to surround yourself with the right people who are uh, willing to help you out and willing to give you a push. And obviously you learn as you go. I mean, even today, I, there are so many things that I haven't experienced before and I'm experiencing it now and they're a challenge for me even today, you know. So it's not like you'll ever be in a situation where you know everything. So Anirban Prashar and Manas Ajmera. Manas Ajmera has asked 100 questions. So Manas Ajmera and Anirban Prashar have a very similar question, so I'll join them also. They're asking, what's your favorite camera and how do you consider your lens choices while shooting a project? So I honestly only shoot with the Alexa. I've been shooting with it since the time I started. I've shot with the Red once or twice, but I prefer the Alexa. It's more calibrated with my mind. And um, I always shoot with that. Now I'm shooting with the LF. And lenses honestly are a very, very difficult thing for me to find and find something that, so first I decide how I want my film to look. And with Ninja, it was very simple because Ram and I wanted anamorphic lenses. And the oldest anamorphic lenses were the Koas, but I couldn't go for that because we didn't have enough variations. So we decided to go with the Hawk, which was amazing, which we kind of created a very, very interesting look. With Uri, again, I wanted to shoot anamorphic. Um, so we decided to go with master anamorphic, but I didn't want the distortion. I wanted it to be sharp, and I wanted it to be fresh and new, and the colors to be sharp, and I didn't want the lights to keep flaring. So, and I, I didn't want it to be too sharp as well. So we, we bought a flare set, which uh, we put in the front element and the back element of the lens, which kind of softened the uh, lenses a bit. The flares sometimes were a hindrance, but I think they created an interesting look for both the movies. So I try to choose different lenses for different projects, and uh, to create a different to, to create a different mood that I kind of decide into production. So Yas Jaiswal seven seven three eight has asked, uh, how do you manage to use soft light? Because I said once that I don't have lights on set. So yes, I still follow that pattern, and I hope to follow it for the rest of my life to not clutter the setup with stands and interfere with actors because I think it. It allows actors to think and allows me to think, so I, I, I prefer it like that. So what I do is I usually light for the white shot and I try to create a soft source from a distance and post that when we're doing a close-up, I'm literally doing one diffusion with one stand, which is probably like 10 feet away from the actor or even maybe closer depending on what I have and uh, if the light in intensity is enough. So I usually just bring a small diffusion just to diffuse the light and that's about it. So but I still keep it far away. So Rhea Dante asks, how do you choose your films and um, what do you keep in mind uh, when before you accept your role as a cinematographer? Is there a story being told or is there some challenge in, in terms of the technical and what's the process? So for me, honestly, the narrative is key. What, what, if I can watch something, when I, if I can feel like I can watch this in theatre when I'm reading it, I'm happy to shoot it. If there's some 
uh, thought in my head where I'm just like, okay, no, I don't know if I can go to the theater to watch this, then I'd rather not do it because I'm not going to be able to give my 100% to that project. And I don't want to compromise, I don't want to let anybody else compromise on their films, you know, because of me not feeling it, I'd rather not be part of those films. And because I personally love uh, what I do and I, and I want to be there 100% when I'm shooting a movie and be there for every inch of whatever is going on. So for me, it's really important to love the people and love the narrative and love each and every process of the movie and for me it's not only the script for me it's the director it's the film it's what we're doing i need all of it to kind of come into place i don't i don't want to settle for just two out of those three things or two out of those four things i want everything to be perfect and and hopefully that's what I, I i receive that for the next few years of my life why how i decided to pick ninja and uri i'll i'll give you guys a brief um, uh, rundown of it. So Nilja was pretty simple honestly. I love working with Ram as a director. He's phenomenal and um, we've shot a lot of commercials before we shot Nilja so I know his working style and I know and Ram I think pushed me to my limits where it was so challenging where he said no lights, no lights on set, no rehearsals, cameras on handheld all the time and you're just capturing a theatre performance. So for me that was really interesting. I've never done that before in my life and the narrative was really strong because it was a human story. It was restricted because it was in a plane and Ram said we're not allowed to move seats. So the entire process was so challenging for me where I'd never ever done something like that before. So I think it was a easy, I literally called him right after I read the script and I said, Ram, I'm on, I'm doing this. And he was really kind enough to ask me whether if I'm interested in doing this or not, but I think he was just trying to be modest. And Uri, I think I decided in a similar way when I read the script, I loved it. I had no idea who the director was. I mean, I know it was Aditya Dhar, but I had never met him before. A friend of mine, Sonia, had given me the script, who knew me and she knew I'd love uh, doing something on those lines. So uh, as soon as I read the script, I again loved it. I immediately started referencing what I thought um, I could have shot and how I could have done those scenes. And as soon as I met the director, I said, okay, yeah, this I definitely want to be a part of because you work off people's energy, right? When you meet people, you understand whether if you can have a working relationship with them or not. So I think I realized that immediately on day one when I met him and I waited for about two, three weeks to get the call back and they said, yes, you're on. So it was good. So Ravaji asks, how involved am I uh, during the pre-production stage and do you storyboard the director? Yes, absolutely. I try to be as involved as possible depending on uh, how much prep time we actually have and how much time we actually, I get the call before we actually start shooting the movie. Usually it's been a good eight weeks I prep. I mean, for uh, my next one, we've been prepping for too long. So, but usually it's been eight weeks is what we prep. And um, yes, I'm very involved with the storyboards and uh, for Neil Jai, marked out, me and Ram sat uh, on sleepless nights, marking out camera positions where, for where each, uh, each camera needs to be because we had four cameras in one plane. So it's very difficult and yes, even in Uri, we had storyboards which we, which we set and we marked out and I think the action director also helped a lot and he created his own storyboards which were very helpful for us as well. Mahalav Singh and Skobagela asks, once in an interview you said you don't choose beginners to assist you. That's not true. That's absolutely not true. I, I think I must have said something else. But anyways, um, honestly, I'm, I get a lot of emails right now. And I'm trying to figure out a method where I can give every single person that emails me an opportunity. But I will be getting back on that method. I'm trying to do it. I, I have hired two new people on that right now with me. And um, they're going to be working with me all year long. And sadly, all the spots are full at the moment. But... Rest assured, I am working on a system that is a bit more streamlined where I can try and give every individual that emails me an opportunity to come on my set once. Thank you so much guys. This was super awesome. I've hope been, I've been able to answer all your questions. I hope I didn't miss anything. Um, and this was, this was a lot of fun. And uh, please shoot more questions if you ever have in the future.